Hello, uh, my name is Derek Levin, and um, I live in Vermont, and um, I like to fool around with things and find out things that are unusual or whatever. And um, a few years ago, I um, happened to run across a situation that is really pretty peculiar, I think, and that is that um, I was um, showing some people some sculptures that I do. They're small sculptures made out of uh, gemstone type materials. And uh, there was a woman standing behind me and I was showing I, my, the, the, uh, the stones are all fairly small because you can't get really huge gemstone materials. And, um, and the woman pointed at something and said, that moved. I said, what moved? Because I, I had a little sculpture, which I'm going to show you in a minute, um, that um, was sitting on a shelf behind me. And she looked down and, and saw this thing that I made move, and I wasn't near it. So um, I tried a few other times, and it sort of took the top off and everything. I call it Pinky. And unfortunately, Pinky has had so much traffic in the tr trying to figure out what's going on that it's a little under the weather. Um, so it may or may not perform as it should. Uh, it'll perform, it just won't, may not be the, the first thing you want to do. But here it's, uh, Pinky is, uh, it's a material. And what I'm going to hopefully do is have this thing move. That's not, okay, we're going to tr try to put it like that. Are you okay with that? Good. Okay, so. I put it at the bottom on the top, and I don't know if there's enough. Yeah, there we go. It's very finicky, but it will move. Okay, well, it, it, I don't think it's going to do it today because it's weather dependent too, and outside it's uh, pretty cloudy. But I will show you what the stone looks like because it's cut so that it can sit in three different angles. There. So it was the the idea was that it was supposed to be a little dog, and uh, the head that moved like a doll sort of, and uh, it 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 did that for quite a while. But all these little chips that you can probably see on the edge here uh, have changed its dynamic, and it, and it doesn't move as easily. What got you into gems? Um, that was an interesting one, too. Um, I was on a trip down to the Florida Keys, and I was by myself, and uh, my girlfriend um, was back in Massachusetts at the time, I think there, yeah. And um, she, I, she really likes jewelry, so I decided uh, that I would try to do something and I saw a little sign on, the, on a building on the side of the road that said um, that it had uh, uh, opals for sale. So I said, well, I don't really know what an opal is, but I'll go in and check it out. And I did go in and check it out and discovered that they had some very nice looking gemstones. And um, I immediately just found opals are the most amazing little rocks. Um, and uh, so I bought her the uh, uh, little cabochon, which is that sort of oval shape for gems and jewelry. And um, and I also the the guy the guy that was running the place, the owner, very nice guy, um, said that he had some uncut opal as well. And I said, well, let me look at that. So I bought a, a bit of that. And. Um, that's where it started, and I just kept on buying the stuff and cutting it and buying it and cutting it. So that was where it all began, so to speak. Um, I've been cutting stones for 30 years now, and um, I just ran across this the other day, and I just thought you might get a kick out of it knowing that. This is, I, I, well, I got a kick out of it anyway. 
It's a piece of quartz that I found many years ago, as I said, and I, it's the first attempt I made at cutting it. Okay, now I've got, you know, literally a couple of hundred pounds worth of material, uh, rock material. So we'll put this guy away for right now and move on. The next thing I think you might find interesting, see, one of the things I'm trying to do with this is find out the science of it. And so the place I went after that, and this is quite a few years later, um, I, I started finding out a little bit about the physics of it, just because this is the stone that moved without being touched. And so I wanted to, I, I, so I asked a bunch of people what that was about, and everybody, everywhere I turned, they said that this uh, psychokinesis um, is not possible. It, it violates the laws of nature. So I said to myself, well, that's interesting because I know it moves. I know it does something because it did it for me. So I sort of had to back up and say, well, okay, what do I do? Because I'm get curious about things. What do I do to, to um, make this work, to find a way of doing this, or, and to find somebody that knows something about it because I, it just didn't make any sense that it was impossible and here it was. I mean, I'm just not in the position to, to do that, to find that. So uh, I started, and the first thing I found out uh, as far as the physics part is concerned is that there are, there, there are four forms of electricity or, or um, whatever in, um, in the universe. That's the way the physicists uh, think it happens. So that the four of them are, um, there's magnetism, gravity, and what's called the two other, the two other forces which are very, very uh, specific to uh, s the structure of, uh, of the world and so forth. So it didn't bother with them. So it had to have something to do with gravity or something um, in the form of electricity. And that's, so that's where I started. And I, w w I started taking Pinky around to places where I thought they might be interested and they discovered that EK was, uh, TK was not a happy thing to be looking at. I mean, all of the scientists, virtually all of the scientists I talked to, and I talked to quite a few, um, said, no, it's, it's not possible to move it. And they wouldn't look. I mean, they literally wouldn't look. I probably talked to 75 to 100 people who were in the sciences, and they refused to look at the thing. The, the, the engineers were a little easy on it. They would look, but they, they just came up with a pat answer and it didn't seem to fit. So um, I started experimenting with all different kinds of ways of doing this. Put this over here. And I found that this one was, was quite interesting. Um, it's almost hard to even to explain. Exp to, to talk about. Essentially what I did, using what I normally do, which is uh, um, which is putting something on top of something else and, and having it go around. So I started, I, I thought about it and I cut this little stone here. I cut both of them and here's the thing that's peculiar about this, and I have to pay close attention to it. And that is that I'm that sitting on here, on this bottom piece of stone, and I'm balancing it on my hand. And I'm trying to keep it level, because if I don't, it'll slide right off of there. And at the same time, I find that the stone will move without my touching it. Now, here's the thing. I've got a piece of stone here. Underneath that, or on top of that, is another piece of stone, which 
should be about the same characteristics of the same kind of stone, which is beryl, which is what aquamarine and, and emerald are. So, and, and both of them are very polished, it slides right off. So how can it have energy in one, energy in the other, and move it? I mean, what's, what's doing that? It doesn't make any sense. But here it is. All right, well, so um, I uh, started, I looked at these stones and I realized that I could get some movement out of them and I didn't understand how that could happen. And so, I, as I said, there were the four, four uh, forms of energy in the universe according to the science. And um, so thinking about those four forces, I, I immediately found out through my reading that um, the, the two of them, the strong nuclear force and the weak nuclear force, um, really doesn't seem like they ha have anything to do with what I was doing because they're mostly about the structure of atoms. And uh, although these have atoms inside for sure, um, that, that really wouldn't have anything to do with the, the other, with, the, with why things move or something like that. Um, so then I realized it came down to either magnetism or gravity. Those are the two other forces. And bo both of those, well, at least um, magnetism is, um, is an electrical force. Gravity, believe it or not, nobody understands what it is and how it happens. Um, which is amazing since every, everything in the, in, on the planet depends on gravity. Trying to figure out what out of those four forces would have something to do with this, I finally came to the, to the, to the thing that everybody in, in one form or another in physics or most everything else comes to, and that is uh, Isaac Newton, um, who um, came up with this idea of the forces to begin with. And, um, and the, the, um, again, it was a strong force, the weak force, magnetism, and gravity. So Newton um, talked about how, how these things were formed, the, uh, the energy and so forth. And the one thing that stuck out at me at that point when I read Newton and tried to figure out what was going on is that uh, he got to this point where he talked, talks about how objects move and uh, how objects are either in motion or at rest. And that was where he got to this concept of inertia. And inertia was that either an object will move in a straight direction without, without changing direction as long as nothing disturbs it. And then when, once it's stopped, it will stay there as long as possible until it's uh, moved again. So that, uh, that, that seemed to come into this as to why these little creatures that I was dealing with were, were, were moving. Why the, why the, it, it didn't make any sense with the energies because there were only four of them. And I, but I kept on looking at it and I kept on saying, there's something different about this here that then I am able to understand. And I finally came to the nub of it, which was something called inertia. And inertia is the thing which it says, if an object is in motion, it stays in motion. And if an object is at rest, it stays at rest. But it also says that it just keeps on staying like that until something either disturbs it or stops it. And it just didn't, it didn't compute in my mind because um, I, I, I had an example which seemed like they were not affected by inertia in the same way. So I wanted to take a look at that and see how that was, that was happening and um, I kept reading stuff and reading stuff and it seemed, seemed to still have a, an inconsistency in it. And so that's what I was after when I started looking for other ways of, of examining that inconsistency. And I've got a bunch of balls here that will show you what that looks like.
when I uh, started thinking about how I was going to look at this, uh, these balls, uh, or, or these objects, or these forces, um, I kept on coming back to one thing, which is that um, if, if you make something permanently uh, flat uh, for good purpose, it will stay there unless it's disturbed. That's what Newton said. So I started looking for ways that I could make a, a surface that um, was sufficiently steady so that I could move something around on it. And, oh wait, 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 I just remember something and this is so cool that um, you'll enjoy seeing this. I carry this around in my pocket all the time. And what it is, is a telekinesis system or, or a series of stones that stack up together. And uh, I show this to people, so that the, the people that I tried to show it to, who were the scientists, didn't want to look at it. They, they didn't, but the people who saw it loved it and they wanted to see more of it. And I made several, a bunch of these things. Um, and it'll just take me a minute to set this up. Okay, so there are four stones here. And um, they, like everything else, um, are changed by changing conditions. But what I have is, there's one stone on the bottom I put down. Now that's a piece of what's known as morganite, which is a pink barrel. Um, morganite, uh, a barrel is a thing that aquamarine and emerald are, so they can be really expensive stuff. This, however, is not expensive. Well, it's relatively expensive. Okay, so we're gonna go like that. Now we'll go here. Can you see this? And we go there. And it, uh, it's balanced on the top of there. And it's a fairly precarious place. But then I'm going to put this other stone on top. And this is when I, really, when I realized that I had telekinesis. I better have telekinesis. There we go. Oh, it's sliding around a little bit. This time I touched it. It's not level on here. So I'm going to have to do, do a little leveling. We'll try it this way. And the leveling is because I've got round balls and they <laughs> will disappear if I don't level them. Okay, so we'll do that one that one, and this one. And here we go. So the question was, can an object move without being touched? As you can see, I can also turn it around the other direction. And the more it gets energized by this, the easier it is to do it. And so I knew that I showed it to a lot of, a lot of people, a lot of the same people, the science types, and they still, they, they didn't even want to look at it. And I said, well, it gets more and more intriguing that I've got something that they refuse to see, but I know that it's real because there it is. Okay, so that was uh, the beginning of searching for another way to do this because they're very difficult to do when they take a long time. And I was looking at something a little easier. 
And so I needed another kind of material um, so that I could uh, use it without having to make every, absolutely everything that I uh, was going to be using and, and uh, find a way to uh, purchase some items to help me understand what was going on without having to cut it myself. And then I went ahead and said, well, why, why, do I, why am I looking at this? And, um, and what, what material will help me and other people understand? And, and okay, so I said, what can I use as stones that will make this happen? That people will understand what's going on and and pay attention. So, I, for one thing, I decided I needed something larger because uh, it'd be easier to see. And then I said to myself, "Well, I don't know anything else to do. So, I've got a whole bunch of uh, crystal balls that I've collected over the years. Why don't I just use them?" And um, so, I, I I I set up a test on that, and it seemed to work fairly well. So I said, okay, now, and then, but then the issue was that most of the crystal balls that you can find and purchase are not actually round. They're, they look round from the eye, from our eyes, but they have uh, imperfections in them and they, they are, are decidedly not round and they roll around all over the place unless you get them level. And uh, so I had to come up with a level surface and also uh, a, a place where the stones could, could hold. So uh, if you see here on, this, on the sheet here of glass, each one of them has a, a, a leveler, a separate leveler on the top. So that between that and it's being smooth and relatively clean, I should be in pretty good shape. So I tried that out and so naturally I didn't have a whole bunch of cheap um, so, uh, crystal balls, so the first one I tried was this this little guy because he was small enough to use, and so all all I do now is spin it. This will take a little bit, a little time to get charge it up. So as you can see now, all I'm doing is spinning the ball and holding it, holding my fist nearby, and there's clearly an electrical current of some sort going through there. Okay, and if you can see that when it comes together, one thing that happens is that I can actually feel some coolness, and that's starting to slow down, so I just spin it again. And then, of course, sometimes it uh, happens that you're just about ready. I don't know if you saw that a little bump in the road there. So I got it started, so I think maybe I'll go up to a slightly higher, bigger ball. And this one I have to hold for a bit. Um, the ball, of the balls I have here, they're, they're, they're basically all quartz. And uh, this stone, for instance, and it really does make a difference, is from Brazil. It was mined in Brazil, and then it was sent to 
China to be cut. And then they sent it from China to back to Tucson, Arizona, which is where I found it. And this one was hand cut by somebody in China. And it's amazingly uh, round. I mean, it doesn't have any imperfections in the surface and so forth, which helps a great deal. Okay, so we're going to try that and see if we can possibly move that. And again, Okay, so let's try it. I'm going to try a little experiment here. See if I can stop this ball. Almost. Sometimes it takes a while to get moving. Boy, this is not responding the way it usually does. This is glass, by the way. As you can see it, it's like in, in length of, now this is almost stopped. I should be able to jump this way over there.
You know, I tried this this morning at home and it was just fine. Well, it's still at home, it's the same place. Hmm? Like weather's a factor, is there anything else that like makes it a factor? Uh, water. Yeah, it doesn't like water at all. I'm afraid it's just blown, I don't know. This is really interesting. When it gets the uh, this, this paper under here, it stops. It doesn't like going on paper, even though it's part of the same. Just, I, 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 I think it might actually be heat. Yeah, because this is a lot warmer than it is. With this light and stuff too, that gives yeah, it very nice yeah, heat. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. And this, bodies. Yeah, so that's part, part of it. Yeah. The, another part of it is this is really. I thought it was going to clear up a bit. Yeah. And that that's definitely slowed it down a lot. So would like air pressure affect it and everything? I think it's just um, electricity in the air. I mean, it's um, apparently the moisture binds up with their loose, loose uh, free, I should say, free uh, atoms that have you know, electrons just floating freely in the air, and it and it, and it binds with the. Um, with the the, the, the um, ball. So you find like you have more. Yeah. yeah so. It says on like sunny days. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, clear anyway. So you're saying like with the heat affects it in the summer. Like yeah. How yeah. does that affect versus? Like yeah. Heat? Yeah. Actually, in the summer, it, it, I can get this to work a little bit, but yeah. that's it. It's done. So like, would you say like more in the winter? It's like your. Yeah. Days. Yeah. Well, I might as well take out my sculptures and have you take a look and see if you think it makes sense to show them. This is, in fact, how we got started to looking at this stuff.
It has about five positions. Well, there's one. And then that goes in here. Well, I hope you all uh, saw the telekinesis, uh, which is the moving of the ball without touching it. And I think it's fair to say that the ball moved. And I, and I send it, sent it around the, the glass. The thing that, that's a little bit disappointing, and, and by the way, that's, that's what I was after to begin with, is find out if this could happen or not. And I think it's safe to, 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 to assert that it absolutely is happening. I'm actually moving the, the stones without touching them, and I can keep them going for quite a long time uh, and do different kinds of things. One thing that it likes to do, and, I, and I, I can only summarize it for you or give you a description of it, one thing that it likes to do is it comes to, the, any one of these balls will come to the edge of this glass and they will stop and they will sit there spinning on the very edge of this thing, and they can go for quite a while. And I don't understand how that can happen. You know, I, I'm just there nearby, and it's just spinning around with, uh, you know, off the edge. It looks like, and I've looked at it very closely. So that's one thing that's, that's kind of peculiar. Um, but the, but the, but the, the, it, the idea. It comes to me that there are times when science yet um, fooled by itself. And what I need, mean by that is uh, there are a lot of people in science who do what, what a lot of people have done to me, which is um, not accept that it could be a little bit different than what they expected it to be, that, that, that everything is perfectly pat, and that all you have to do is understand physics and you can understand the way all things work. But I haven't gotten a decent explanation yet of why this works. Okay, so normally I'd be able to take this and run it across the glass, and it would go from, I could stop it right on the edge of that glass. And again, it would sit there spinning. And I'm talking about going from here to there, which is about, uh, I don't know, three feet. And, um, and it just, goes spinning off. It just stays, stays there. As to why this didn't w work the way I, I hoped and expected it to, it's been kind of iffy weather around here. And um, there's a, uh, suddenly we have a lot more electrical things in this room than, than we normally would have. This, this camera here throws off a lot of heat and electricity. And the one thing this is not comfortable with, the telekinesis, uh, is when it's, when it's hot in the summers, it just kind of closes down. And also um, water, I mean, if, if you put your hand near, if you, if you spin one of these things, I guess I gotta take it off of here. And I'll use the big one for demonstration purposes. If you spin that, and it's spinning well, and look at, there it goes. Okay, see? No, not quite. Yeah, 
if, if it's sitting, if it were just sitting here spinning, and, you, and water comes nearby, made it. Does it always seem to work with like crystals and glass? Can you do it like with any I've tried I've tried figuring out something else and I can't think of anything that would work. Most materials are too soft. Okay. Telekinesis is about moving things without touching them. This the only time I get have to touch it is to get it going because the inertia is uh, the, oh by the way something important about inertia. The inertia is more seems to me according to what I can tell is more resistant than the, than the uh, that in motion. It's easier to start to stop something in motion than it is to start something with inertia. Well, I mean, the, 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 there's no question about it my, about it in my mind that uh, it's possible to move an object without touching it, and it's, and um, and if that is so central to the science then there must be something wrong somewhere. And, you know, and, and, and I, can, I can say this for sure, and that is as I sit here and, and the number of hours that I've put into discovering what was going on, there it is. It sits there in front of me and says, okay, well, the answers that we've got aren't necessarily the answers that we need. And it, would we find anything new by looking at it in a different in a different way, and I think that that's that, that this tells you that it's worth pursuing it at the very least, and uh, and also it tells me that uh, don't 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 do this when the conditions are good, and y'all called me that um, to find out if it was a good day to do it, and I had trepidations in saying yes because I had tried it the first thing this morning. Um, now I look out the window and it's kind of foggy and hazy and calm. No, not much wind and humidity coming through. Definitely moisture. We've had about three days of serious rain, so there's been a lot of moisture in the air. And so you have to, uh, you have to take everything into account when you're, when you're checking things out and hopefully I'm, I'm going to continue working with this because I can't, I've got to figure out what's going on and where it can possibly go.